Hey y'all, welcome to My Homeschool Hub's Mentor Moms Roundtable Discussion. Today I'm talking with Kimberly and Michelle about what some of their favorite math curriculum is. Remember, you can work with Kimberly or Michelle. Just go to myhomeschoolhub.com and click on Mentor Moms where you can sign up to work with them on a one-on-one basis. Hello, welcome to My Homeschool Hub. Today I'm talking with Michelle Moore and Kimberly Probst. And I'm Colleen Crane, and we're going to be talking about some of our favorite math curriculum. I'm just going to share a couple of our favorite things so that you can check it out and see if it might be something that works for your family. Well, I'll go uh, with some of the younger level math because that's where we really kind of had the most fun. And I firmly believe in playing games uh, because it engages a child in learning. And so I'll see if this works to hold up the right start oh, that's math good. Yep. oh i love and, right start math it totally votes and it. yeah. it's just full of ideas with game cards and things like that and then to help little kids learn probably backwards but not backwards. to learn their numbers i did sandpaper numbers so that they could feel them so for the younger grades Crazy. these are tactile games things like that and then even a game like tenzi with what makes 10, it's a variety of ways to get them going. And I can even still play card games with my older kids and we can do it with multiplication, division, fractions, that kind of stuff. So there's a wide variety of ways to teach it and to take the textbook side of things, not that you discard it completely, but to then be able to play games on off days or when they're just weary from staring at a piece of paper. It just helps engage them more. That's one idea for the younger ones. Does that have a workbook that goes along with it or is it all games? How does that look on a normal day? So this particular one is all games. It's just a whole list of math card games with fractions, with clocks, with numbers, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. And some of it takes going into first and looking through it to make sure you understand the concept but it it really made it fun and even with my older kids when i was working with the younger kids they'd jump in because they'd have fun and any time you're reaffirming what they already know you're you're strengthening those pathways in their brain so you're able to help them with a lot of that and then i do add in an actual math curriculum because I think it's important. It helps me make sure there are not gaps, but I can use the games for play. So I use the Christian Light Education and it's 10 workbooks throughout the whole year, but it's great because they finish a workbook and it's like, okay, nine left, eight left, seven left, and you know what's coming and they understand. And it teaches in such a great way because it gives them little uh, snippets. It teaches them in little ways, like with division, here's one way to divide. And then it takes them to step two further down after they've had a lot of practice. So that has helped me to have a guide, but then games on the side to have fun with. That's very cool. What about you, Kimberly? What do you do? We we do a similar thing. That's neat, Michelle. We love games as well. And I find that they are a great supplement to what we do. And so I found games like Monopoly or pretty much yeah. any game teaches you math. And even little guys, like my six-year-old's excited to join the game. And she's doing things like Uno and stuff like that. And she can even partner with someone. And then they start learning these concepts. So when you go to actually teach it they already know it it's really fun if you do play games as a family michelle mentioned right start math which actually is a whole math program that book with the math games is excellent and there are other there's workbooks that come with it and everything and i really like their program what i like best about their program too is their abacus have you ever worked with Mm -hmm. that so like um you know here's an example of the abacus. So it's a special abacus that divides the numbers in um, fives and then switches it at 50 so that students can see at a glance a number. So like if you did, you know, 26, you can see that. 
And so I find it's very, very effective. And you can actually use this with any math program. So that's what we like. So we use Right Start Math, but I also use Ray's Arithmetic. Ray was a contemporary of McGuffey. So, you know, the McGuffey readers that were used in the one-room schoolhouses. Well, yeah. Ray did the math that was used in the one-room schoolhouses. So we have a large family with 12 kids. So I like the one-room schoolhouse materials because it's very effective. You can do it with a large group because you can take... Each student can progress at their own level. Ray's arithmetic is actually, it's free online because it's no longer in copyright. There are places you can get it for free and just download it. I got like a disc where you can get a whole, the whole math collection. I think it was like a hundred or something and it was the whole thing. So I just printed it out and it has a lot of word problems. That's so and it's really, and I actually do this with the abacus from the other program. So I kind of blend and make my own thing. And I even made my own little cover for our books. <laughs> now, so, how, how late do you use that? Do you use that all the way up through high school? I use this through middle school. Okay. And then once I they get to high school, then they, they start working a little more with my husband. He has a PhD okay. in math, so... You don't have to have a PhD to teach it, but he takes over some more of that. Then they start doing more on Khan Academy, and those are websites that you can, actually they've grown to the point where they have whole courses of instruction. You can take Algebra 1, you can take Calculus, and all that, and you have video instruction and everything, and it's all free. Now, do you have any other thoughts on math? Another one I really, really like is Life of Fred. I have the, of... the older one for the algebra. Oh, yes, you can use it for algebra. You know, there's ones in fractions and yep. decimals. So, and it's, it's really, really fun. For people who don't know this curriculum, it combines a story and very funny stories with the math. And it's very, it's written by, I think, an abstract random person. So it's not sequential and boring. And it's more like, let's get into math and love it. Right. All my kids and let's, enjoy. let's see how it applies to life and how you yes. use it all the time, as opposed to yeah, it was really helped helped us a lot when typical textbook was just overwhelming and not quite explaining enough. You know, math brains work one way. A quirky math brain like he is works a different way and it was able to pull out some of that stuff and make math less intimidating, which is usually yes. what happens when you get to the higher levels is, oh my gosh, this is scary. And it doesn't have to be. Um, he even does a good job of in like some of the earliest books, even like introducing like calculus concepts and upper mm -hmm. level concept in a way that a younger kid could understand, but so that they later don't get afraid of it. When my husband teaches math, he's seen all kinds, because he teaches at the college level too, and he's seen all kinds of adults and people who are just scared the minute they see a fraction or right. any kind of math, really. And it's almost like a physical reaction <laughs> to it. So he has to overcome that fear because it's hard to learn anything when your fight or flight Here. reflex yeah. are all on. So I but like the, how this does that. And we've talked before about how home education is life education. And so yes. math is when you go to the grocery store and you work out how much is that per ounce, per pound. What's the better deal? And when you cook and let's cut this recipe in half, let's double it, let's make it a third or whatever. And all those skills go into it so that it's not so overwhelming. And it's fun. Cooking can be a whole lot of fun, a great way to learn some of those skills. And some of the manipulatives are super helpful. And oh, sometimes yes. I just say, go get the pizza. And the pizza is really just a foam piece, but you have it in tenths and eighths and sevenths and sixths and fifths yes. and fourths. So some of those manipulatives are great. And we made our own abacuses so each kid could have so theirs did and did it. Yep. I bet it's the same thing. We had fun. Pops, you can make them out of yep. like popsicle sticks and skewers and little beads. Yep. And then they can personalize it. And they're like, that's not mine. I want mine. Choose and so, their own color. Yeah. Yep. They learn that's a lot just really by good. making it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they see how things go together. This is the thing that my kids enjoy the most. We took a regular deck of cards. Yep. And I took out the face cards. 
and then I turned the aces, I just used white out and turned it into a one. I drew a one on them. And so mm. we've done all kinds of games with these, like war, really, you can use yep. war for any anything. It can be like multiplying and whoever gets the biggest wins. It can be addition. It can be subtraction. It can be two cards against two cards. It can be division. It's way more fun than flashcards. And then you can kind of do races with them. And I got this idea from Singapore Math, that which I did when my kids were tiny and I loved it but the problem was is that I had three kids that were all pretty close and there were so many things and maybe this was my naivete at that point I know I needed to do everything so between the textbook and the workbook and then all the games I was literally spending about four hours on math every day okay. and it was just really overwhelming. And so we stopped doing Singapore math. If you can manage it better than I did and not let it take all that time, I recommend Singapore. They have beautiful colors in their textbooks and their workbooks. Well, the workbook's not, but in the textbooks, it's very beautiful and it's nice for the kids to look at. And it's very thorough. It's very solid teaching. My kids really understand the math when we were doing Singapore. But if you have a lot of kids that you're doing that one-on-one -on -one attention and you're getting into it, Singapore can really drain your schedule. But I never got rid of that. We've we've held on to that and loved it. For for one of my kids, this is we do it's BJU and it's distance mm -hmm. learning. It's their DVDs. And so they have this workbook that he goes through and then I get teacher sheets that come with it. And then these, it's a book full of DVDs and they watch each lesson and the teacher teaches it. And then I'm responsible for the grading and the coaching and everything like that. From a parent's perspective that needs their kids to learn math that you don't want to teach, BJU is very thorough, but it's not my kids absolute favorite, but you can see it's, it's colorful. It's nice to look at. It's very thorough. It's very solid teaching. So it's a quality product. And then the other one that I do for my oldest son, he's in algebra, and I, I'm not teaching algebra. I'm just not that math person. I barely got through math in high school and college, and I'm not revisiting it. We do something called Mr. D Math, and it's great. Uh -huh. Mr. D does a live class that starts every fall where he teaches, and they go on the same time and do an online class. Or the self-paced course is what my son does, and I like that a lot better just because I don't like anybody telling me what to do and when, and we can do it on our own schedule. But he also provides really good support. So two evenings a week, and I don't remember what time, but two evenings a week, my son can join live help sessions with Mr. D, and he'll answer questions. My son's never even had to use those, but I know that they're there you know, in the back pocket for a safety measure. But what's even great is that when my son has a question, he'll email him. And every single time my son's emailed him, he's responded within minutes and helped my son for whatever questions he's had. And it's great because he goes through the lesson, he watches the lesson, he prints out his own coursework so you don't even have to buy a book. It's all just right there. He prints it out each day and then the answers are provided. So once he's done, he's to check his own work. And that gives the student accountability to see this is where I messed up. And then, you know, you make sure that they're going through and making their corrections and figuring out where they went wrong. And there's tests, there's quizzes, and there's some um, chapter tests, and there's a first semester test to do the whole first semester, and then the second semester test. And self-paced courses are cheaper than the live classes, and I like it because it goes all summer. Like, we do math all year long. That's my family, what we do for math. We've gone through quite a bit of math, and I don't think that we're probably abnormal as homeschoolers for that. I think a lot of homeschoolers go through it, which kind of stinks, honestly. I felt like there are gaps. Um, more gaps may be than necessary when you change a lot. So I'm very hesitant to change anymore and try to dig in and stick with it, make it through whatever we're going through to keep them on pace. And that's where I found with the Christian light. I didn't bring the workbooks. I don't know why, but I use it up through eighth grade and I have found it actually did super well and taught algebra. It's more of a Mennonite style. And so a lot of them, they expect kids working and being productive in the field more at a younger age than the traditional school would. And so it teaches very 
thoroughly and it it's word problems like Kimberly you said one of yours has a bunch of word problems those are so important because really math in our daily life more often than not is having to break apart what is this question asking me so I think sometimes we also need to consider math includes logic and add in mm -hmm. some really some good thinking skills and deduction and observation and things like that and that can be through games or red herring mysteries or many different things to do. Usually I fall into, oh great, now it's high school. Shoot, what do we do now? Because each kid is different and their learning style is different. And so that's usually where we try many different things. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, how often in your life do you some, does someone hand you a formula that you have to figure out the variables for? Right. Like it doesn't happen. But every day we do math using word problems, story problems, stories of our lives problems right to solve all yeah. out what we're doing that's totally true okay well thank you so much for talking with me about math today i'm excited to join you again to talk about more curriculum thanks for joining us today please remember you can work with kimberly or michelle just go to myhomeschoolhub.com and click on mentor moms please also consider liking this video and subscribing to our youtube channel we'll see you next time